Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 27 and in this segment we're going to take a look at the mass continuity equation that we derived in lecture 8 and take a look at how that changes when we go from a standard Cartesian grid to pressure coordinates. So with that let's go ahead and dive right into it. So just to refresh your memory on what the mass continuity equation looks like and again I'm going to start with the incompressible form for the sake of simplicity that goes something like uh, what you see on the screen, du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz is equal to zero, and that is in fact the form that we use in a standard Cartesian grid in terms of x, y, and z uh, coordinates. Now let's take a look at how we can modify this equation to get it into a form that's consistent with pressure coordinates, something that we can use in the realm of pressure coordinates. So that's going to involve a little bit of calculus trickery, which I'll go ahead and explain. So what we can do is we can actually invoke the chain rule to modify this term dw dz. So we're not, so again, the, the x and y coordinates are still the same. This is something that we mentioned in the previous in the previous segment, how when you go from Cartesian coordinates to pressure coordinates, the only thing that changes is the vertical coordinate. You would go from z in uh, standard Cartesian coordinates to pressure in pressure coordinates. So the only thing that we have to worry about is how this uh, vertical term changes when we go from Cartesian coordinates to pressure coordinates. So what we can do is we can invoke the chain rule here. And uh, you're going to see a little bit of uh, interesting trickery here by invoking the chain rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of split this fraction apart in terms of numerator and denominator, but I'm going to keep the numerator and denominator in separate fractions here so that I've got an empty denominator and an empty numerator here. And to invoke the chain rule in this particular case, what I can do is I can put a differential in the numerator and the denominator, and I can put any differential there that I want, as long as it is in fact the same exact differential. So in this case, since we're trying to get in terms of some sort of pressure coordinate, it would make sense to name a differential that is pressure. So what we can do is we can plug in a differential of pressure in the denominator and a differential of pressure in the numerator here. And if you look at this from sort of an algebraic standpoint, you can see that this equation really hasn't changed much. You can see that if I were to cancel out these differentials of pressure here, I would be left with just dw dz, which is what we started with up here. So that would sort of imply that we haven't really changed, uh, we haven't really changed this equation at all. But as you'll see, this does in fact sort of transform into a different form of the mass continuity equation, and this different form will be in terms of pressure coordinates, which is what we're, which is what our end goal is. And another little calculus trick that we can do is we can actually change up this uh, derivative here. Uh, we can actually rewrite this as a derivative of pressure with respect to this product here, this product of Cartesian vertical velocity w times dp dz. But if you remember from the previous segment, we showed that this is in fact true. We showed that omega is just equal to w times dp dz to a reasonable approximation. So what we can do is we can take this expression here, w times dp dz, that's equal to omega. So what we can do is we can just simply replace this w times dp dz and replace that with omega to obtain an equation that looks like so. So we get du dx plus dv dy plus the derivative of omega with respect to pressure. And we can just simply shorthand that into an equation that looks like this. And this is in fact the final result. We get that du dx plus dv dy plus d omega dp is equal to zero. And if you check the units for this, you will find that the units are in fact dimensionally consistent. So these terms du dx and dv dy, the units of that are in fact per second. It's in units of per time because I have meters per second in the numerator and meters in the denominator. The meters cancel out so each one of these terms is in units of per second. And this is actually consistent when you take a look at this term as well because you get d omega dp. Uh, omega is in units of pascals per second in the numerator and the denominator has units of pascals. The pascals cancel out so d omega dp, that whole quantity, also has units of just per second. And one thing that I should also point out is uh, the reason why I can do this little trick here is the fact that dp dz, uh, we can sort of uh, treat that as a constant in this case. If we can't treat these two quant, if we can treat this quantity as constant, then we wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, I did fudge a few uh, rules related to a few uh, mathematical rules to obtain that, but it 
actually I just skipped a few steps, but this is in fact this is in fact true here. This is in fact the form of the mass continuity equation that you obtain in pressure coordinates when you go from the Cartesian formulation, which is shown up here, to the uh, pressure coordinates formulation, which is down at the bottom of the screen. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this pressure coordinates formulation because there's actually a pretty interesting result that we obtained by uh, using this particular formulation. And that particular result relates to omega. So you may remember in the previous segment when we looked at a mathematical definition of omega, the mathematical definition was the Lagrangian derivative of pressure with respect to time, and you saw that we could expand that Lagrangian derivative in terms of a local derivative plus horizontal variation, something that accounts for horizontal variations in pressure and vertical variations in pressure. And since omega itself depends on those horizontal variations of pressure, usually those are small, but we can, uh, we can also account for those if we so desire. But since omega depends on the horizontal variations in pressure, also by the ideal gas law, we can argue that pressure depends on density. So that means that omega, by, by directly accounting for horizontal variations in pressure, omega also implicitly accounts for horizontal variations in density. So as a consequence, the pressure coordinates formulation of the mass continuity equation is in fact a fully compressible form of the mass continuity equation. And again, the reason why is because omega accounts for both horizontal, horizontal and vertical variations in pressure, which also implicitly accounts for horizontal and vertical variations in density. And if we're allowing density to vary in the horizontal and in the vertical, then that means we've got a fully compressible form of the mass continuity equation. And also, if we wanted to sort of rewrite this equation in terms of some kinematic quantities, so again, du dx plus dv dy, that's still just the horizontal divergence term delta. So if we wanted to, we could rewrite the above equation as delta plus d omega dp is equal to zero or just moving a term over to the right-hand side of the equal sign, we could write that the uh, value of delta, the horizontal divergence, is equal to uh, minus d omega dp. And you might also be looking at this thinking, okay, how exactly does that work out mathematically? So as we saw in some earlier lectures, when you have a negative value of delta, that means you've got a convergent float pattern, which means you're, if you're at the surface, you're going to have rising motion. And we saw that in the previous segment, if you've got rising motion, W is positive, but omega is negative. So how exactly does this work out mathematically? Well, if this numerator is negative, remember that uh, omega, so if we have rising motion, then omega would be negative. But also keep in mind that pressure decreases as you go in the vertical direction. So if omega is decreasing as you go uh, upward in the vertical z direction, that means pressure is also decreasing as omega decreases, which means we have a negative value in the, in, the denominator, or in the numerator here and a negative quantity in the denominator, and those two negative signs just cancel out. So not a whole lot really changes. The main thing that we, the main change that happens is dw dz becomes d omega dp, but that change also allows us to treat this form of the mass continuity equation as a fully compressible form of the mass continuity equation. But again, just to sort of repeat what I said earlier, if omega is decreasing as you go upward, meaning you've got rising motion, motions that are increasingly going upward as you're going in the positive z direction. So as you go up in the atmosphere, omega becomes more negative, meaning you have more and more rising motions. But also keep in mind that as you're going up in the atmosphere, the, uh, so this, that means this term in the numerator is negative. Omega is decreasing. But also keep in mind that as you go in the positive z direction, your pressure is also decreasing. So again, just to reiterate, if the omega is negative and dp is negative, meaning as you're going upward, omega is decreasing, meaning your motions are becoming more and more vertically upward. But also in the process of going upward, your pressure must be decreasing. So you end up with a negative numerator and a negative denominator, and those two negative signs cancel each other out. So we're just left with delta is basically the same thing that we had before. We had Earlier we had delta is equal to minus dw dz, and by going to pressure coordinates, we pick up two negative signs, one the numerator, one the denominator, and those two negative signs just simply cancel out. So that's 
another really nice thing that kind of works out when you go into pressure coordinates is not really the only thing that really changes is we're just writing dwdz as d omega dp and by doing so we get a fully compressible atmosphere and a fully compressible form of the mass continuity equation which is uh, kind of nice to have However, there is one, so that actually offers sort of an advantage. It allows us to take into account, uh, it's sort of implicitly take into account horizontal variations in density and pressure. One disadvantage that this offers, though, is omega might not necessarily be zero at ground level. So if you're going strictly by the approximation that we applied in the previous segment, where you just said omega is just equal to uh, minus rho g times vertical velocity, then yeah, omega would be zero. But in the actual atmosphere, you might have horizontal variations in pressure. You might have horizontal advection of pressure. You might have some sort of outside force that's lowering the pressure, like uh, some sort of latent heat release that's occurring above you. So in the actual atmosphere, omega is not strictly zero, but to a good approximation, you can assume that omega is zero. But in the actual atmosphere, that is not going to be the case. So that's going to do it for this segment on the mass continuity and pressure coordinates. And in the next segment, we are going to take a look at how lapse rates ch uh, change when we go from Cartesian coordinates to pressure coordinates. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.